Morning, everybody. Please, please take your seats. So welcome to our service this morning. I, I hope that you've come, as I always say this when I'm doing the service, I hope you've come expecting to receive something, something from God. Uh, don't look at receiving anything from me. I'm just uh, the middleman, as it were. So um, we will... Oh, I have got a prayer on there. Okay, we'll open in prayer and then we've... Um, I'm all mixed up. Then we're having our reading. So those of you that are doing the reading, you're after the prayer, okay? So, Father, we thank you that we've come into your house this morning and that you are going to be here with us because you've promised where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. We don't gather here because we, w we want to feel good. We gather here because we want to bless you and lift you up on high. So in all that we do, in all that we hear, in all that we sing, in all that we take part in, may you be blessed and may we be honoured by you. Help us, Lord, to just trust in you in all things, in your name. Amen. Before we do the next bit, just to say, I've been asked to say that next week, the church service will be up in the hall upstairs, not in the church um, here, okay? Um, so, so we're going to have our reading. So I'm throwing everything around this morning. So we're going to have our reading now. So Esther's going to come up. Did you, did you select somebody else? Have you nominated an extra person? Okay, when you... Oh, I've got to read the first bit. I said I'd read the first bit, didn't I? <laughs> so it's John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. This is the translation of the scriptures called The Voice. Um, and I like this because it means... It Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees a man with some clout among his people. He came to Jesus under the cloak of darkness to question him. Teacher, son of a certain broken, you are obviously a teacher who has come from God. The signs you are doing are proof that God is with you. I tell you the truth, only someone who experiences birth for a second time can hope to see the kingdom of God. I am a grown man. How can someone be born again when he is old like me? Am I to crawl back into my mother's womb for a second birth? That's impossible. I tell you the truth. If someone does not experience water, the spirit birth, there's no chance he will make it into God's kingdom. Like for like, whatever is born from flesh is flesh. Whatever is born from spirit is spirit. Don't be shocked by my words. But I tell you the truth. Even you, an educated and respected man among your people, must be reborn by the spirit and enter the kingdom of God. The wind blows all around us as if it has a will of its own. We feel and hear it, but we do not understand where it has come from or where it will end up. Life is a spirit. Uh, life in the spirit is as if it were, were the wind of God. I still do not understand how this can be. Your responsibility is to instruct Israel in matters of faith, but you do not but you do not comprehend the necessity of life in the spirit. I tell you the truth. We speak about things we know and we give evidence about the things we have seen. And you choose to reject the truth of your witness if you do not believe when I talk to you about ordinary earthly realities, then heavenly realities will certainly elude you. No one has ever journeyed to the journey to heaven above except the one who has come down from the heaven from heaven, the Son of Man, who is of heaven. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. It, in the same way, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Then all those who believe in him will experience everlasting life. For God expressed his love for the world in this way. He gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not face everlasting destruction but will have everlasting life. Here's the point. God didn't send his son into the world to judge it. Instead, he, he is here to rescue the world, headed towards certain destruction. Can you just say thank you to these two young ladies? Because they only knew about that this morning. <laughs> it's quite a bit there. So, um, 
So having heard that reading, we're going to join together and we're going to sing our first hymn, which is to God, things he has done. Okay, please take your seats. So, in that reading, we heard about a chap called Nicodemus, and Nicodemus came to talk to Jesus. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on um, in the sermon. But first of all, for the youngsters, before you go out, I've got a little activity for you, and then we've got a special song for you. You don't have to sing it, but a, a song for you. So, my first question to you young people. Oh, okay, I didn't put them in a little separate things. So what is a gift? What do you get? What, what, what do we mean when we say you've got a gift? Happy birthday. Yeah, you can get it for your birthday. What else can you, what, what, what is, what makes a gift a gift? I didn't hear that bit coming. It's given. That's, that's good. So a gift has to be given. 
What else makes it a gift? Go on, some of the answers are up there because um, I forgot to put the, the clicker thing on them. So what else makes it a gift? It's given, it's received, and if it remains unopened, it's still a mystery, isn't it? So, this is a gift. Why is it a gift? Because it's wrapped up, isn't it? So, what do you think, that you in the red jumper, Spider-Man? What is it? Do you think? What? A what man? A Spider-Man. No, it's not a Spider-Man. But what is it by looking at it? Hmm? A mystery. Well, it is a mystery because it's wrapped up. Anybody want to guess what it is? A ball. How do we find out what it is? Spider-Man. Here you go. Catch. See, open it and see if they're right. Is it? It sounded like a wave. Either that, it's not a piece of glass. You know that now, don't you? <laughs> so we can look at a gift... And sometimes we can recognise it. I don't know if you're like me, but with gifts, I like to feel them and try and work out what they are. Um, that's more fun for me than actually opening the gift, um, which annoys people intensely, because you can work out what it is before you've opened it. It is a ball. There you go. You can keep that. All right? So that's for you. So here's another gift. Anybody want to, can, can you see what that is? Yeah. Sticks. Sticks, could be. <laughs> so you can't tell from the shape now, can you? So the only way we can work out really what's in it is by either opening it or, or guessing. Is that what you said? Or guessing. So we can ask questions, can't we? It, well, it is, it is a rectangle, but because you think you're, because your dad thinks he's being funny <laughs> by telling you to say it's a rectangle, would you like to, would you like to try and guess what it is and, and then open it to see if you're right? Do you want to pass this to, I've forgotten your name there, that's terrible. Got it? We didn't save you check all of this. So, have a feel of it. Have a feel of it. See if you can guess what it is. Any ideas? Open it and see if you're right. Now, did you all hear what she said? She thinks it might be a pack of pencils. Who put all that sellotape on there? <laughs> 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 so, so not quite a pack of pencils but it is a pen it's one of those four colour pens I've got one more here your hand went straight up what is it food could be food what makes you think it might be food you, you think it's food. Because it looks like a food container, doesn't it? Would you like to open it and find out? Here you go. So while she's opening that, having said it, she thinks it's food because it looks like a food container. I just want to say to you that the whole thing that Nicodemus came to Jesus, Jesus always preached and taught that the kingdom of God was near. Jesus came, is it food? It's gummy, show everybody what you've got. I hope mum doesn't mind that you've got, a, is that all right? Yeah, okay, so Jesus taught about the kingdom of God being near. And we talk about new life, we talk about what Jesus gives as a gift. We have the gift of God, the gift of new life. So before the children go out, I've got a song for them, which we're going to listen to. I've been doing some um, looking online at some new, uh, what I'm calling contemporary worship. 
And I found this, and I love this, because the chorus is, this is the gospel. This is the good news. Tell everybody there's a God who loves you. Okay? So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting you to... Martin, just, bef just, just before we do that, Martin, I think it's very important that we sing another song. It's no, Martin, no. It's Martin's <laughs> birthday today. <laughs> so, everybody ready? Happy You were under strict instructions to do that. <laughs> right. So, this song um, called This is the Gospel. So, uh, I chose to put that in because um, it's a challenge to us as church sometimes to have music that is relevant to young people. And I listened to this and, and I just thought the words were brilliant. This is the Gospel. This is the good news. Tell everybody there's a God that loves you. Um, now, the good news for you today is I'm not going to ask you to try and sing that later on. Um, but I wanted to bring it in for the young people, uh, really, to, to sort of show you that you can have a party in church and it's not wrong. You can get excited about the Christian message of, the of God. We can get excited and we can what do I want to say, jig and dance and have fun with that Christian message and share that message. So the children um, are going to be going upstairs, but before they do, let's just say um, the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our day. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this point then we'll let the children go out, and we are going to um, sing again, but this is to a YouTube I think it's coming up on there. The words will be on at this time. Um, my Jesus, my Saviour. Oh, all right, it's not on there. Hang on. Can you, Janet, um, are you able to play this one? Because I thought I'd put the YouTube bit in, but I haven't. Sorry. <laughs> Haven't you? Just to goes to show you that no matter how much preparation we do, we do manage to get things wrong. So <laughs> we've got a good pianist, so.
not played that before. That wasn't bad, was it? You want to sing it again? take your seats so father as we come around your word open our hearts and our minds to receive from you in Jesus name Amen. so Nicodemus was a well-educated man he was part of the uh, Sanhedrin and he was an educator in that um, in his role um, with the Sanhedrin he would have taught young Jews so he would have known the Old Testament like the back of his hand so he's heard about this man Jesus and he's obviously been intrigued uh, by the message that Jesus is sharing which is that the kingdom of God is near and that things are about to change Jesus did not mince his words he, he told the good news he told the gospel message and he made this gift available to all who wanted to receive it. Now, Jesus predominantly spoke to Jews. And the Jews at that point believed that this message was only for them. The Gentiles were not to be included in this. This was a message and God was going to come and save and redeem the Jews. The Pharisees and Sanhedrin were a bit worried about what Jesus was doing and they kept on trying to come up with ways of trying to shut him up. A bit like we'd like to do with some of our partners, really. But they couldn't do it. They kept on trying. They tried it again after Jesus had died and resurrected and the early church was born. They kept on trying to shut the apostles up. But God had already deemed that this message needs to go out. So they couldn't, they couldn't stop him. If you read through the Gospel of John, you'll see on numerous occasions, it says they took him somewhere to, him, to the edge of a cliff to throw him off. Or, and that. But the phrase, his time had not yet come, comes up quite frequently. And there are times where they took him like, to the edge of the cliff to throw him over, and he just walks through the crowds. God needed Jesus to be able to declare this message of salvation. And it's obviously pricked up Nicodemus's ears because Nicodemus, like me, being a brave person, under the cover of darkness, seeks Jesus out. He doesn't do it openly. He does it under the cover of darkness. He, he sneaks out, as it were, and he finds Jesus and he talks to him and he asks him about this salvation message. Teacher, he says, some of us have been talking and you are obviously a teacher who has come from God. So the recognition of who Jesus was is there. The signs you are doing are proof that God is with you. So Jesus says, I tell you the truth. It's funny because he doesn't really respond to what Nicodemus has just said to him. He says, I tell you the truth. Only someone who experiences birth for a second time can hope to see the kingdom of God. Only someone who experiences birth for a second time 
can see the kingdom of God. Well, that sounds a bit confusing, doesn't it? That sounds a bit sort of out there. Nicodemus responds and saying, well, how is that possible? But of course, Nicodemus, despite all his intelligence, is confused because he's confusing what Jesus is saying about a spiritual life with his physical life. Is it possible? to call back into your mother's womb? No, I bet your mother would have something to say about that. It's not going to happen. You can't get back into your mother's womb and be reborn. So Jesus is obviously not talking about a physical birth. He's saying that you must be born physically, and that's a natural thing. That brings you into the world. That's the human thing. And everything that comes from that is the natural stuff and the human stuff. But the second birth is a birth where we are changed from the inside. The second birth, this rebirth that Jesus talks about, is where we choose to follow God. It's where we choose to change the way we are living, to become children of God, to proclaim the gospel, and to live according to his word. But it's a choice. And we have to choose to have this second birth. We have to choose to want to change. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, unless you make that choice and you are reborn, you can never see the kingdom of heaven. Now this is a hard teaching when you think about it, because I'm going to say something that can be taken, I don't mean it in an offensive way, but can be taken offensively. I've I've had people um, get annoyed with me about this. Unless you have chosen unless you have chosen to invite Jesus into your life no matter how many times you go to church no matter how many times you read through the Bible no matter how many times you tell people that you're a good person you will not see the kingdom of heaven it's not my words it's what Jesus says unless you are reborn you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. It's a hard teaching because in today's 21st century church, we teach that God is a God of love, and he is. But he's also a God of justice. And everything that we do in life has consequences. The things that we do that please God, we can call them good deeds, good works. But then there are things that we do that doesn't please God, and we call that sin. That's a word that's falling out of fashion nowadays. When I was growing up in the 1970s and 80s, we used to still have crusades, and they used to talk about sin. Sin is all the things that you have done wrong in your life. Sin is the very reason that Jesus came and was born in that stable, lived his life and died on the cross. It's all because of sin, because man, as in human, uh, but man went wrong in the garden. See, in the garden, God put Adam and Eve and said, this is all yours. You can eat anything you like, but don't eat from that one tree in the middle of the garden. There had to be a rule, because otherwise we'd just be robots. There had to be a choice by man, even if it was just Adam and Eve had to choose not to eat off that tree, but they chose to eat off that tree. Sin entered the world. But God had already got a plan that he was going to send Jesus to die to redeem us from all the sin and on the results and the rewards of sin. And the reward of sin is death and separation from God for the whole of eternity. But God sent Jesus and Jesus willingly died on the cross and he rose again defeating sin, defeating death and defeating sickness. And Jesus says, unless you choose, unless you've made that decision to be a Christian, it doesn't matter how many times you go into a church, it doesn't matter how many times you've, you think you're a good person, you won't see the kingdom of heaven. It's a hard teaching, but it is the truth of the scriptures. That's what the Bible says. Nicodemus says to Jesus, well, I don't understand what you're about. And Jesus says, well, you're an educated man. 
But he then goes on to explain, and you get the, one of the most famous verses in the Bible, Jesus. Jesus, He doesn't quote the, this famous verse, he says it, and we now quote it. One of the most famous verses in the Bible, and I'm going to go back to the old authorized because that's how I learned it. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him will never perish but have eternal life. And that sums up the gospel. That sums up the gift of God. This is the gospel. This is the good news. Tell everybody there's a God that loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. I remember years ago hearing somebody talk about this and they said, are you a whoever? Are you a whoever? Have you chosen? Have you accepted the message? Because the problem with the church today, in my, one, of the, one of the problems, I'll say one of the problems with the church today, is the church has stopped preaching the gospel. The church has stopped telling everybody this message because the world doesn't want to believe that something so simple as saying, I'm sorry, Lord, please come into my life, and there's no catches, there's no snags, that's as easy as it is. The world doesn't believe that because there's always a catch, isn't there? You don't get anything for free, do you? You can buy this, you can buy that, and if you buy two, you get one free, but you've got to buy two first. You see, there's, there's always a catch, isn't there? But the good news is, there is not a catch with this. Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose again, so that we can choose to be his children. We can choose to say, I'm going to change from my human sinful life and follow you. This is the gospel. This is the good news. And if you haven't done it yet in your life, you can do it this morning. And that's the beauty of it. I was talking to somebody the other day about baptism. And as, as, as a Baptist church, uh, we practice believers' baptism, i.e. we don't baptise children. As a Baptist church, we baptise believers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with baptising children. That's a choice that's made, and I, I'm not saying one way or the other. I believe by believers' baptism. That believers' baptism is a public declaration of a private decision so you can choose to give your life to Christ but you can keep that to yourself you can live your whole life and never tell anybody that you've done that but your baptism is where you go public that's where you say to your friends and your family and the church and people around you I have chosen to follow Christ and by going through the waters of baptism I am declaring today openly that I am a Christian and I am going to try my hardest to live as a Christian. Jesus said, he followed that verse up with, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus talked to Nicodemus about being born again. And Nicodemus was a bit confused. But Nicodemus went away, I believe, a changed man. He'd been told the message. And I believe he responded because the next times in, in Nicodemus, is, um, when he appears in the Bible, one is he uh, is talking about, is it right for us to try and stop Jesus' uh, teaching? And the second one was when he went with Joseph. I can't do this from my teeth of Joseph of Arimathea um, to collect Jesus' body from the cross. Nicodemus went public. He came out and he said, I'm a Christian and we need to treat this with respect. There is a spiritual birth and there is a natural birth. And being reborn means that we change the life that we are living. It's Christian jargon, isn't it? Have you been born again? It's not a phrase we use today. It's almost like it's Christian jargon. But basically, you can say to somebody, have you accepted Jesus into your life? It's the same question. 
Have you been reborn? Have you accepted Jesus into your life? Every human has a human birth. Whoops. Um, and this is, but this is nothing to do with what Nicodemus is asking the question of and what Jesus is answering. So I want to close, really, before we go um, in, into our next hymn, I want to close by asking all of you the question, and you don't need to tell me, I, I don't need to know, but the question is, have you made that decision? Have you made that decision that you want Jesus in your life? Or is church just something you've done every week because you've been brought here all those when you were a child? It worries me that we don't see as many young people in church today. That's because we don't bring there's so many, so many dis distractions outside of church. But we need young people because churches are going to fizzle out. We, we, have a, we have a duty to teach the good news. We have a duty to tell people about the Christian message, what God has done for us. I am so grateful for what God has done, me, done for me. When I look back at my life and I think, would I have chosen me? No, I wouldn't. There's much better people out there, out, out there than me. But God loves me. God loves you. And if you were the only person on the planet, God would have sent Jesus to redeem you. That's how important you are to God. That's how important this message is that Jesus says, you must be born again. Jesus died on the cross. So the next song I've chosen is I redeem, when I redeem. I can't even read my own words. When I survey the wondrous cross. So we're going to stand together when I survey the wondrous cross. And I don't know whether there are people thinking about what I've just said. But if you're thinking about it and you, want, you need some time to think about it, just whilst this is playing, just whilst we're singing, sit and think about what the cross means, what Jesus has done for us. And if you want to make that decision today and you want somebody to talk you through it, come and talk to me afterwards or find one of the deacons or anybody really in the church who's a Christian. It doesn't have to be somebody special. You can just come and you can talk about it and you say, actually, I think I need to do that decision. I need to make that decision. There's no pressure on you. I just want you, I, I, I would hate for you to miss the boat. So let's stand together and sing.
please uh, take your seats. I'm going to pray for situations that are going on around the world and in this nation. And, uh, a couple of people that we've been asked to pray for as well, so we're going to include those in these prayers. So let's come before God. Father God, I thank you for all that you have done for us. I thank you that you are God who is not distant, but that you are close by us. You are God who is involved in every aspect of our lives. You commune with us and you converse with us. And I thank you that we can come to you and that we can ask you for the things that we do in prayer. We pray for the world around us. We pray for where there is war and we pray for peace. We pray that leaders of nations and countries would get together and rather than shooting and fighting and sending in drones and bombing, that they would discuss and they would come to peace. The fighting would stop. The injuries would be brought to a halt. We pray, Father God, for those that have been injured and that are in hospitals and being treated by charities and organisations. We pray that you would be with them and you would strengthen them. And as we look on as outsiders and we wonder sometimes what the futility of all this is, we don't need to understand it, Lord, but we do need to know and remember that you are in control. We pray for this nation that we live in as we go through the next six to eight weeks of political infighting and people stepping down and arguing and telling us what they're going to do and Lord, I pray that you would be with those that want to stand as politicians, but I pray particularly that you would be with those that are Christian politicians. I don't want to pray for them exclusively, but I pray that you would give them the courage to stand by their convictions and to stand in the truth, that you would, ha you would have them in your hand and that you would be protecting them. We pray that whatever the outcome of the general election in six or eight weeks' time, Lord, we ask that you would be with the, whoever is elected. Remove the apathy from our nation about our politics, of looking on and going, whatever they do, it's not going to be what we want, and they're only looking out for themselves. And help us, Lord, to realise that we have a duty to vote. We have a duty to be involved. We have a duty to hold them up in prayer. And we ask that you would guide us through these next few weeks and that you would help us to know which way you want us to vote. We pray for all those that we know that are ill. Names that I've got here in the book before me today, we've got Paul Fisher as he's undergoing another round of treatment. And for Nigel, we thank you, Lord, that Nigel is now in hospital, being looked after by the doctors. He's now on the right medication and is being treated. And we thank you, Lord, that this, we believe, is an answer to prayer. We pray that you would be with him and with Carol, and any family members, close friends, neighbours. We pray that you would be close to them all as we see this disease striking somebody that we hold in great regard. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give him strength, the strength to look to you, the strength to know that you know what you're doing, and whatever the outcome is, that you are still God. And we ask, Lord, that as we leave this service this morning, that we would know once again about the choice we have before us to live for you, to follow you, or to live our own way. And I pray, Father, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds and bless us in all that we do in our lives. Amen. So we've got another song that's coming up on um, YouTube. This is, um, you'll know most of this song. It's, um, uh, Oh Lord My God. Oh Lord My God, When I in Awesome Wonder. Um, but we're doing it on YouTube because Matt Redman, as a lot of these modern musicians do, has written a, like an extra chorus stroke link in there. Um, so uh, we're going to sing it to that. The tune hasn't changed, so you'll know it. Just, uh, just go with it.
hours. Oh. Bear with me. I've lost my mouse. There we go. Now may you go, carrying the message of redemption, sharing the blessings of new life, 
living in the knowledge that you have been born again because Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus lives for eternity. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.